Welcome, guys and gals. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And it feels so good, so good to be inviting you to Unit 2, Motion, Forces, and Work. Uh, we're breaking this unit up into two parts. Part one is covering everything that is motion. Your textbook will also finally come into play in this unit, and everything we'll be covering in the videos and also in class can be found in Chapter 2 of your textbook. So, what is motion? If an object is said to be in motion or is said to be moving, what the heck does that mean? Okay? How do we refer to an object in motion over a certain period of time as it covers a certain amount of space? All of those questions are going to be addressed here in this video today in Lesson 1 as we learn to understand motion. The title of our lesson is Understanding Motion. Topics to be covered are going to be a general definition for motion as it's related to reference points. Um, the difference, second topic here, the difference between 2D words, displacement and distance. And then finally, the third topic will be speed, or how much motion takes place over a certain amount of time. Okay? So how do you even know if an object has moved? That's our first question here. How do you know if something has moved? Um, I pretty much guarantee that whatever you give me is a definition, your own definition, you're probably pretty dang close to the actual definition of motion. Anytime an object changes position, it is said to be in motion. Now, let me give you a real quick demonstration here, okay? All right, so watch me here. Did I change position? Was I in motion? How do you know for sure? Okay. Got to look at a couple things here. Um, now, when looking at the position of an object, both initial and final, or at the beginning and at the end, um, you know, the motion of it or the position of it can be debated. So I always have to mention reference points, okay? Got to mention reference points when discussing, discussing the change in position. A lot of times, scientists like to establish coordinate systems to easily discuss, compare, and contrast position and motion of objects. Show you an example of that here in a second. But let's think back to the example I just gave you of me rolling around in my chair here, okay? My initial placement, my initial position would be right here in front of you, okay? That's my initial. Now I'm going to move backwards here, okay? This could be considered my final position. I have moved. What are your reference points? All the stuff behind me, right? All the stuff behind me. You know from prior knowledge that a lot of this stuff is not moving, okay? But you can tell how I react or how I interact with these things behind me, these other reference points, that I have indeed changed position, that I have displayed motion. I have changed position from my original or initial spot. Okay? Now, when an object has changed positions, a couple of D words come into play here, okay? Uh, distance and displacement. Distance can simply be put as the total amount of area covered by an object as it changed positions. Displacement is the distance and direction of an object in position. Let's head back to our example here of our coordinate system and compare and contrast these two terms. Okay, so up here on the board we've got our coordinate system. All right, we've got our coordinate system and it's been adjusted. It's no longer just an X and Y axis with a certain interval marked out on each axis, but we've actually mapped it out to where it kind of looks like the city of Seneca here, okay? We have our origin, the very center of our coordinate system being the Seneca Library, which exists on Main Street and 6th Street. So the very origin here is 6th and Main, okay? The Seneca Library, where the old four-way stoplight used to be. Now it's just a four-way stop sign, okay? So we've got the Seneca Library. So when talking about distance and displacement, we're talking of two separate things, real similar but two separate things, okay? So for instance, if we wanted to travel to, oh, let's say, Imaha Valley High School, okay? Imaha Valley High School exists on 11th and Pioneer. So here, right here, is Imaha Valley High School, okay? So if we wanted to travel from the Seneca Library to Imaha Valley High School, we would go one, two, three, four, five city blocks to the west, and we'll go one, two, three city blocks to the north. And all of a sudden, we're at Seneca High School. Okay? So what's our total distance here? 
Well, the units we've been looking at are blocks. So we would have gone 5 and 3. We would have gone a total of 8 city blocks. All right? That would have been our distance. Now, displacement would be a little difficult to figure out with this because we're not going in the same direction each time. Okay? Not going in the same direction each time. We'd actually have to use a little geometry here with the Pythagorean theorem to see what our displacement is. It would be a little something like this. That's what, how far we would be displaced from our original or our initial position. Okay? So let's look at a couple of others here. All right? Mr. Williams' house. When Mr. Williams moves to town, he's going to be living at 9th in Roanoke. So I go here to 9th. I get down here to Roanoke. 9th in Roanoke. Bam! Right there. Mr. Williams' house. Okay? If I'm going to travel from Nemo Hall Valley High School, I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight city blocks. Another eight city blocks. That would be the distance I would travel from Nemo Hall Valley High School to my house. All right? If I was going from Seneca Library, it could be one, two, three, four, five, six. Six city blocks. All righty? A couple others. Saints Peter and Paul, which exist at 4th and Pioneer. Let you guys figure that one out on your own here, all right? Get a little practice with this. The Knights of Columbus, which exist at 1st and Pioneer. Seneca Wholesale, which is at 8th and Main. And then finally, the Seneca Twin Theater, way down here on 3rd and Main. Now, with these last two examples, we could do a little bit of displacement, all right? We could finally talk and look at displacement because we're kind of going in just the same direction, all righty? So, if we were go from the Seneca Library to Seneca Wholesale, we're going one, two city blocks. Our distance would be two city blocks. We moved position two city blocks for distance, but it'd also be our displacement. We've now gone from the initial point of the Seneca Library two blocks over to the final point of the Seneca Wholesale. Okay? Now, let's say we wanted to make a trip. We need to pick up. Let's say we're working at the movie theater. We've got to go pick up some more soda for the actual pop fountains at the movie theater. So we start here at the Seneca Movie Theater. We're going to go down to Seneca Hotel. okay? We're going to travel one, two, three, four, five city blocks to the Seneca Hotel. All right, but we're going to turn around. We're going to come right back. One, two, three, four, five city blocks to the Seneca Theater. What's our distance? How many blocks do we totally travel? Ten. Ten city blocks. But what's our displacement? Zero. Our displacement would be zero because we started and finished at the same spot. So hopefully this coordinate system, all right, that's what we've got here, basically a grid established on the X and Y axes, okay, kind of like battleship almost. Hopefully this coordinate system can uh, help you better understand a little bit about distance and a little bit about displacement, and hopefully some of these examples kind of knock out those two D words for you as well. We'll practice this in class a little bit. Pretty simple, but we need to make sure that we're good with the technical side of it as well. Just in case we get some really complex problems, you kind of know how to uh, approach this. <clears throat> All right, so we've knocked out motion, what it means to change positions, and how we can describe an object's total change in position. Now, another common topic of discussion when looking at an object in motion is its speed or the distance an object travels over a certain unit of time. Often we like to refer to it as how fast an object is moving. And by doing that, you're asking how much distance has been co covered over a certain amount of time. Speed is a rate, and we've seen rates before. A rate is anything that changes over time. We looked at popping rate when we were talking about popped popcorn in our experimental design lab in Unit 1. How does one calculate speed? It's easy. You take the total distance and divide it by time. Some examples could be objects tend to change speed frequently. Rarely does an object maintain a constant speed or not change at all. You may walk faster or slower as you're just progressing your way through the halls between classes here at NBHS. We have a couple of different ways to describe the speed of an object as it is changing. Those two ways are average speed and instantaneous speed. Average speed is the total distance traveled divided by the time of travel, or the total time of travel, excuse me.
When making a car trip across Kansas on Highway 36, your speed will vary from time to time. Going through small towns, following slow drivers, steering clear of animals and or roadkill, etc. Many different things could come about and pop into your roadway as you're traveling and would force you to adjust your speed. So, average speed would be a good way to refer to the rate at which you complete your trip. Instantaneous speed would be what your speed is at any given point or time during your Kansas trip. Your speedometer does a great job of telling you your instantaneous speed and would give you great data on how you're speeding up or slowing down as you exit or enter different speed zones throughout the Highway 36 corridor. Well, that does it for this lesson. Hopefully you feel a little more comfortable with motion, distance, displacement, and how speed is a term we use to refer to an object's rate at which it changes position. We'll be doing a lab covering this material and completing some practice problems in class to help you better understand motion and speed. See you in class next time.